The heading has, as you notice, some um, quote marks in it. This is my, this is our introduction to inverse functions. Now, the reason why I put introduction in inverted commas is because even though this we're starting off a new topic, hooray, this is going to be great. Uh, you've actually been using inverse function, inverse functions, for years. Good morning. Years and years and years. In fact, way back in like kindy. Year one, you first met the first inverse functions that you had to work with. We just didn't call them inverse functions. They were addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction are things you can do very quickly without learning any fancy language or anything before you even know what a function is, let alone an inverse function. But they are your first example of things that are, well, what does inverse mean? Uh, it comes from the word invert. Uh, if you think about turning something upside down or turning it inside out, uh, reverse is another similar thing. You, you're changing the direction of something so that's exactly opposite to what it was before. And that's what addition and subtraction are. Yeah, does that make sense? Now, I know in my, um, and I'm sure Mrs. Lees can uh, confirm this, in my conversations with some of you as we've been talking about how you've been going in extension one, how you've got, been going in the mathematics course, I've made a point to say, hey, look, some topics are extension one topics and some are not. And so you can sort of um, not freak out too much if you know that mathematics is where you're going to be placing most of your effort. This one's a bit funny. Um, it's an extension one topic, so I'm gonna put this asterisk here, but it's one of those extension one topics that is why you will do so well in mathematics because we've been working with inverse functions for so long. Inverse functions are in the two unit course, we just don't ever deal with them in any kind of rigorous detail. So the time and effort that you spend and the understanding you develop in this topic will equip you to do everything else much better and with much more precision. Okay, so let me make that first note that this is an extension one topic. So you will never see the word inverse appear in an assessment task for um, mathematics for two unit, but you'll still see the ideas like, well, you know, anytime you're adding and subtracting, you're using these things and there are plenty more and we're going to have a look at some of them later. Okay, so that's the first point I wanted to make. Um, the second point I wanted to make is where are we going? Uh, I told you where we've come from, the fact that we've been using these for a long time, but why are we actually introducing this as a separate, ooh, here's a whole new special thing. The reason why is we want to solve a very simple question which kind of been begging its way into you, which is that we can differentiate lots of different things now. Just rattle some things off for me. What are the first things we learned to differentiate? What family of functions were there? Starts with a P. Polynomial, very good. We started with, um, you know, x squared, x cubed minus one, yada, yada, yada. We learned the rules to do with that. Uh, we learned product rule, chain rule with polynomials. And then we said, okay, you know about lots of other functions. What other things can you differentiate now? You can do exponentials. Along with exponentials, you can do logs, logs which by the way, another pair of inverse functions. We'll come to them again later. Uh, you know more than exponentials and logs. What was the most recent kind of thing you learned to differentiate? Trigonometric functions, right? So you know the different derivatives of sine and cos and tan and all of the different versions of those. There's one left. There's one left. One family of functions that you've worked with, but you don't know how to differentiate them yet. And that's, as you can see by the title, right? That's these guys. Sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse. We know how to work with them. We've used them since year nine when you were trying to find out the angle in a right angle triangle and that kind of thing. But we don't know how to do calculus with them. And this is one of the most surprising results in the entire course. But to understand why it is what it is, I mean, if you wanted, you could just look at the reference sheet right now and you can see the, the result that you're supposed to get out and you can say, oh, okay. But we're not just about getting results and then just, you know, popping them into a formula. We actually want to understand why on earth it is what it is. So that's where we're going and we have some groundwork to lay. Okay. So underneath this, I'd like you to draw for me a bit of a table. It's just to help us wrap our head around We've been dealing with these inverses a lot before. The table's going to have, let me have a look how many columns and rows we're going to have. Uh, let's go three columns. Uh, if, you, if you've got columns already set up in your page, you're going to be in some trouble. You're going to need the full width of the page. But um, I'm going to use about this much. And here we're going to have three things we want to think about. Functions that we know. They're inverse functions that we know about. And then that third column is just so we can draw some pictures. I'll call that graphs. 
<clears throat> okay. So, I've already clued you into uh, two different kinds of functions that have inverses, and one is on the board. So addition and subtraction, right? Now these are operations, not functions. So how can we talk about a function that uses addition and that uses subtraction? Well, let's just try a simple example. These are all just examples. If I had a function like f of x equals x plus 2, what would its inverse be? What would be something that takes that and turns it upside down, reverses its direction? Well, yeah, instead of adding 2, I'm going to subtract 2, yeah? Start nice and gentle. Over on the right hand side here, let's just draw a really small Cartesian plane, like so. What do each of these functions look like? Well, I know what x plus 2 looks like. It's going to be straight line, gradient 1, and I'm going to shift it vertically upwards 2 units. So there you go. That's what it looks like. There's f of x there. What does x minus 2 look like? Well, it's going to be very similar, but it's shifted down. Now I'm going to introduce some notation to you here, and it's, again, introduce. Uh, it's notation you've seen and used before, but you have to be really careful with it. When we talk about a function, f of x, we label its inverse as f, <laughs> I'm going to read this out really carefully, with the negative 1 up there as if it were the power, of x. Now, I say as if it were the power. It is not the power, right? This, and make a big um, sign for this with a different color if you've got it, is not, usually anyway, going to be equal to what we normally think of when you put a negative 1 in the power. What do we normally think of? We think about the reciprocal, 1 over, right? So it's tempting to think this, right? But like I said, we've been using this negative 1 notation before, it's quite popular, right? And we know that this is definitely not sine inverse of x, is definitely not 1 on sine x. We have a different name for that. What is that thing? Cosec. That's cosec. Different beast altogether, okay? So the way I actually read this, rather than saying negative 1, I say f inverse of x. That's the way I read it, um, just to avoid the confusion with using the negative 1 sign, okay? Right, so that's great. Nice, easy it, function and it's inverse. Let's do another one. What was the other pair of functions that I mentioned before that are inverses of each other? We talked about logs and exponentials. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way you look because as you can see, this inverse I could put over here and just swap them around. Okay, let's put the exponential over here, e to the x. Okay. What would be the inverse function of e to the x? Well, it's going to be a log. What will its base be? Well, its base has to be the same as this base if we want them to be opposites of each other. So log base e of x. Again, draw yourself a little Cartesian plane. What are these things going to look like? I'll give you a second to catch up and draw while I make myself some space. You have some pictures there. You've got e to the x, we know exactly what this looks like. It's going to be this guy up here. You don't have to worry too much about drawing the asymptote because this is a small thing. What does the log function look like? Well, yeah, it's hugging the y-axis like so, and then it goes off like that, okay? So we're gonna have f of x over here and f inverse of x there. Happy so far? Okay, now I want you to think for a moment, and I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to lead you yet. I can tell you there's at least two really easy accessible kinds of functions that you know the inverses of, right? Um, there was one on the board a second ago that I just rubbed off. There's an even easier one that's very closely related to this. So I want you to put two more rows onto your table and I want you to think, okay, well what's a function that I know about and it's inverse and what would they look like if I drew them? I'll give you a clue. These are really basic operations, right? They're not the only basic operations you know about which you have an equivalent inverse for, okay? Uh, and then keep on thinking, I'll give you a minute or two, you can work with the people around you as well. And once you've come up with something, call me over and I'll see if you're on the right track.